If there ever was a time that we should sing and celebrate and pray that the Lord God Almighty would be the King of our hearts, it is now. Because here's what I believe, church, it is only through Jesus Christ being on the very throne position of our lives, centered and focused on Him and Him alone, that we can make it through such a season as this. Hey, I'm so glad you are with us today. And before we get into the Word, I just wanna take a personal moment and say to the New Hope family, I miss you. I sincerely miss you. 2 Timothy 1.4 is a verse that I've never really resonated with as deeply as I resonate with it now. The word of the Lord says, I long with tears to see you, to be with you again, so that my joy may be complete. And it doesn't matter what age you are, where you come from, whether you've been at New Hope 18 years or eight months, I miss this church family. And I'm sure in the same way that, that these awesome musicians miss the world changers that they lead and love, I just wanted to share with you my heart. And I know we're gonna be back together, but I want you to know I am praying for you. I long to be with you again. And I'm just crazy enough to believe that when we get back together, God is going to do something special in our midst. I'm just crazy enough to believe that God is going to use this crazy season that we are in to grow his church, to grow our faith. And when we come back together, I believe it's gonna be a very special moment. But until then, know that I love you, know that I am praying for you, and know that I am so thankful that we can use technology to have this online experience. Hey, let me pray for you now as we get ready for the word. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather together. And I know we might not be together in person, but Lord Jesus, we are so grateful that we can use technology and you can redeem it for your glory. Father, I pray that you would bless every single person on the other side of the screen. Father God, would you pour out your spirit upon them? Would you unite us in this online experience? And would you speak to us through your word? God, we submit to the authority of the scriptures. And as we always do, we pray that you would take our minds and think through them, take our hearts and fill with them. Lord Jesus, would you take my lips and speak through them today? For if you do not speak, then absolutely nothing of any significance will have been spoken. And we pray it all in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people said together, come on church, amen. And amen. I am so glad you are here with us today. Hey, one of my favorite trips, and uh, I've been, I've been four times now, maybe five, is uh, a trip to the Holy Land. And I hope you will come with me uh, at some point in time in the future. We go about every two years, and if I could travel anywhere around the globe, I tell you, I would go to the Holy Land. And there's one site that I would go to while I'm in the Holy Land, no doubt it would be the Sea of Galilee. It is the most picturesque, beautiful sea you can ever imagine. It's really like a big lake, if you will, even though we call it the Sea of Galilee. Last year, I took 24 New Hopers and um, we spent quite a bit of time in the Holy Land and I went up early. I went up two days early to spend time by myself on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. And so I got this little hotel and it was just me and um, I was doing some reading. Uh, I think I was finishing up my book, if I'm not mistaken, and I was just spending some time in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. Like, again, there's just no better place to be, let alone reading the Gospels, where most of Jesus's ministry took place 
um, at the Sea of Galilee. And so one afternoon, I decided that I was going to uh, pay this guy to take me out in a boat. It was just him and I. I was gonna take the rest of the New Hopers when they came in a larger boat, but I found this guy who had this boat and, and uh, worked up a deal and he took me out. And I uh, had nothing with me but the Bible and uh, he took me out there and I, I think I paid for like an hour or something like that and we spent time and uh, about halfway through, he, he said, sir, there's a storm coming. And he pointed off towards Capernaum and on the, on the horizon right above the mountain, right above Capernaum, there was just a little line of clouds. And I thought to myself, there's no way that can be much of a storm. I thought he was just trying to get off the water and take my money. And so he turned and by the time we started making our way back, I was absolutely amazed at the pace and how quick the storm actually came over the mountains and started turning that lake into a sea. I guess that's why they call it the Sea of Galilee. But before long, I knew very quickly this brother knew what he was talking about. And the wind started pouring down off this mountain. The waves started beating against the boat. And he actually said at one point in time, if it gets much worse, we're not going to be able to dock the boat. We're going to have to stay out here and weather the storm. Yeah. Now, thankfully, we made it in time. And it was so bad that you, when we got to the dock, the boat is bouncing up and down against the dock and you had to time it just right to get onto the dock. And I scurried on back to my hotel. But it brought new meaning to Mark chapter four. I don't think I'll ever read this particular story the same way Again, picking up in verse 35 of Mark chapter four. I hope you have your Bibles or the app open, but here we go. Mark chapter four, verses 35 through 36. And, and here's what we're gonna do. We're really just gonna unpack this scripture. It's kind of like a Bible study today because the passage just really uh, opens up and flows nicely with this series that we're in right now called Faith Over Fear. Verse 35. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Verse 36, leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, underline if you got your Bibles, just underline or circle, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. Now check it out. It said that they took Jesus just as he was was. In other words, they didn't get out of the boat and take the chance of getting caught in the crowd. They just started going across the lake. They wanted to get away from the people, get out on the lake. And again, I just shared with you about the Sea of Galilee. Let me show you a picture. Seven miles wide, 13 miles long, 680 feet below sea level. And as you can see from this beautiful picture, it is surrounded by mountains. So as the wind comes over the mountains, storms can appear out of nowhere. Verse 37, look at what it says. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly, what does it say, church? It was nearly swamped. Now, now circle that word squall in your Bible. In the Greek, it is the root word for hurricane hurricane. Check it out. So this was a big storm. They are in a fishing boat with 13 guys in the boat. If you've been over to the Sea of Galilee, you know that right on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, there is this museum where they have kept from long ago what they call the Jesus boat. And as far as we can tell historically and as far as antiquity can teach us, this is the kind of boat that Jesus and the disciples we're in. And as you can tell from this picture, 13 men in this boat, they had a full load. And there must have been some kind of storm because these guys are professional fishermen. They were used to the storms. They were used to the rough waters. But this one was bad. This one scared them to death. Look at verse 38. This is great, guys. This is, this is amazing. Jesus was in the stern, what? 
sleeping on a cushion. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you just gotta, you just gotta laugh at it. They're in meltdown mode. They're professional fishermen. They're used to these storms. This is so bad that, that they're freaking out. And Jesus is sleeping, probably in the fetal position in the stern of the boat. Look at what they said to him. The disciples woke him up. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Now listen in, this is pretty cool. You might wanna write this in the margins of your Bible. This is the only time scripture records Jesus sleeping. It's the only time. Jesus is catching him a nap. He was obviously exhausted from teaching all day long and taking care of the needs of the people. He uses one of the seat cushions, if you will, to sleep. And his disciples interpreted this as, don't you care? Don't you care? Got a question for you. Have you ever wondered if God cares about what you're going through? Come on. Let me ask this question to you. Have you wondered any recently if God cares what you're going through? God, don't you care? Don't you care that I can't buy any toilet paper anywhere? <laughs> what is up with this toilet paper shortage? Don't you care if I have to cancel my wedding? Don't you care if I lose my job? Don't you care if I get sick? Jesus, don't you care, true story, New Hope family, don't you care that the hospital made us leave the bedside of my young wife and our young mother only for her to die the very next day? Don't you care? And if you've asked that question, hear me, as we all have kind of confessed that we've asked that question, it's human nature. And it's okay to ask that question so long as you run to the right place for the answer. Verse 39, again, I told you we're just gonna keep running back to the scriptures and watch this passage just unpack for us today. Verse 39, he got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. And then the, the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Some of your translations say that Jesus said, peace, peace be still. Jesus didn't get up and say, hey, have a great day. How you doing? Peace be with you. No, no, Jesus got up and he rebukes the wind and the waves. He doesn't come down on the disciples. That's a note in and of itself, right? I don't know that he would come down on us for asking these hard questions. Don't you care? And in that moment, the scriptures tell us that Jesus showed authority. Jesus demonstrated authority over nature. So much so that nature, the storms, bowed down and calmed down at the authority and the word of Jesus Christ. That's a good place for an amen. And here's what I want to let you know. Listen in. Don't miss this. Jesus is still speaking peace into your storm. He has authority over everything that is going on in your life. He even has authority over the coronavirus. Don't mishear me and don't misquote me. I'm not saying that the coronavirus is, is, is instituted or initiated by God. No, I'm not one of those guys. And I'm not even saying that the coronavirus is judgment on humankind, as some people are out there saying. I'm not, I don't buy that. But what I do know is he has authority over it and everything submits to the authority of Jesus Christ, plain and simple. He has authority over every single thing and he wants to calm the storm in your life. He wants to give you peace. Verse 40, go back to the text, verse 40. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Verse 41, they were terrified and asked each other, who 
is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. What Mark does here in the gospel is so fascinating, guys. If you got your pens at home, you wanna take a note on this because you'll, you'll never read this verse again the same way. Mark takes the noun form of the verb of the Greek word for fear and he puts it together and literally it says that after Jesus calmed the storm that they feared a great fear. Say that with me. They feared a great fear. It's fascinating what the scriptures are teaching us in that one little nugget. In other words, they were afraid of drowning from the storm and then they were really afraid that they knew that this one, this son of man had ultimate power and authority. In other words, they were afraid of the storm and then suddenly they are afraid of the power of Jesus. You see, in our contemporary church and in this day and age, I believe we have lost a good sense, a healthy sense of the fear of God. I believe we've kind of turned Jesus into our little chub and we've kind of made him all cool and hip in the contemporary church. And y'all know I'm all about the contemporary church, but I believe we've lost a healthy sense of fear, fear of God, not an unhealthy sense of fear, but a rightful fear of God. Because here's what you need to know. If you fear God rightly, you won't fear anything else in this world. If you don't fear God rightly, the tendency is to fear so many other things in this world that God would not have you fear. This is a great lesson for us in this current season that we live in. A great lesson of how we are to respond to fear. Let me tell you what they did right in the scriptures. They went to Jesus with their fear. They didn't go anywhere else. When they were helpless on their own, they knew where to turn, and his name is Jesus. So how should we respond in the midst of this storm that we are in? What is the way forward for us? There's a great verse in 2 Timothy. I think I mentioned it ever so quickly last week at the end of the message. And the Bible says this, for the spirit that God gave us does not make us, what does it say? Timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Let me read it again. For the spirit God gave us does not make us what? Timid, but gives us power and love and self-discipline. Check it out. Take some notes in your Bible or on your app. This word timid comes from the same root word in Mark 4, which is why I'm connecting the two. When Jesus asked the disciples, why are you so afraid? When Jesus asked the disciples in Mark chapter 4, why are you so afraid? He's basically saying, using the same word that we see in 2 Timothy, why are you so timid? Why are you so afraid? And as followers of Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Can I get an amen? A Holy Spirit that gives us the ability to respond differently. We are not going to live in fear, but we are going to be led by the Spirit. And when we are led by the Spirit, the Apostle Paul reminds us that the Holy Spirit does not make us fearful. It does not make us timid, but it gives us power. It gives us power. The word here is the same word from which we get our English word dynamite. <laughs> it gives us dynamite power. The apostle Paul tells us in Romans 8 that the same, listen, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you. We just have to tap into that power source. It is in you. This means that God has given you all that you need to make it through any storm, including COVID-19. That's what he 
has given us. He is that good. Let me tell you what having the Holy Spirit in your life looks like. And I gotta tell you before I read this scripture, most of us are gonna be homebound now. It's going to get crazy. And so one of the ways in which you need to measure how you're doing, how you're tapping in to this power source comes straight from Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And if you know your word, I'm talking about the fruit of the spirit. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Is there joy in your life? Is there peace, forbearance? But again, I like the, the translations, patience. Oh my Lord, we need patience in these days, right? Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. And when we are living by the power of the Holy Spirit, that is what it looks like in your life. And then it goes on to say this in verse 25, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The Apostle Paul tells us that the Spirit of God the spirit that God gives us is not a spirit of fear or timidity, but power. And secondly, what is it, y'all? Love. The early century church, the first century church, I should say, faced extreme hardship. I don't know if you know this about church history, but the first century church experienced a very difficult time. Probably far more difficult than what we are going through today. They were martyred for their faith. They were scattered in the diaspora, if you will. They had to abandon friendships and relationships. And again, many of them died for their faith. And yet, this is why I believe God is going to do something incredibly significant in this season. And yet the church grew. And one of the ways in which they grew one of the ways in which we know that they grew is that even the pagans in the first, the second, and third century would talk about the Christians. And even when they said they don't believe in this Jesus, they would say, but oh, how they love one another. Look at Acts 2, 44. All the believers were together and had everything in common they sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Hey, can I just say something to you, church? These are really good days to put on display what it looks like to live an unselfish life. These are fantastic days to put on full display in your cul-de-sac or in your apartment or in your neighborhood or whatever the case may be, to put on full display what it looks like to sacrificially love people. Talk about an amazing opportunity that God has given us as Christians to share our faith and love on people. Hey, please write this question down. If you don't write anything else down, would you, would you write this down today? As followers of Jesus, we should be asking ourselves, what does love require of us? What does love require of us in a time like this? The apostle Paul would say, for the spirit God gave us does not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and what's the third one? Self-discipline, self-discipline. This word means to have soundness of mind. Some of your translations actually have that, soundness of mind. It means control of oneself in the face of panic or of passion. This is what it looks like, church, to have faith over fear. And it really is possible. Even in the midst of a pandemic, 
like the coronavirus, I believe that the people of God can live with sound mindedness or self discipline where we have control of our thoughts. We have a steady faith and we're able to live with faith over fear. Let me wrap up today and just give you three quick points of application. Number one, if you want to have sound mind and and discipline, self-discipline, you want to control your emotions, discipline yourself to not watch too much news. Come on. Some of you are sitting home and you're going to have to be home now. And if you are not careful, you will get glued to CNN or Fox or some local news station. And you will just be fixated on this nonstop negative news. And if you are not careful, it will send you into a tailspin of panic and depression. Discipline. I mean, there's nothing wrong with watching some news. I watch news. I watch it every day of my life. But you need to pull yourself away from that. Put the phone down. Go for a walk in the great outdoors. Get outside and exercise. Look at the the flowers that are starting to bloom. Or just be quiet and listen to the birds sing. Discipline yourself to not watch too much news. Number two, real quickly, activate love with your family and friends. Notice I said activate love. I didn't say pray about being loving. No, 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 no. Some things you don't need to pray about. Activate your love with your family and your friends. Think about how you can serve your family and friends. Most of us are going to have more time on our hands. What if one of the key things God wanted us to get out of this season was that we would become more loving? 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, but these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is? Love. Activate that love. If you had to have an elderly person down the street, check on them. See if maybe you can go get some groceries for them and just drop it off at their steps. What would it look like to sit down and have a real significant conversation with your spouse? Maybe you haven't done that in a long time. I mean a deep and vulnerable, meaningful conversation. Or to sit down with a kid and take the time to listen to them. And how are they processing all of this? And how can you be their spiritual leader? How can you be the pastor or the priest of your home? Activate love with your family and friends. And here's the last one. I'll end with this. Leave the results with God. Leave the results with God. And I just want to tell you something today. I actually want to bring you into a a practice that I started doing many, many years ago. I've lived through some challenging seasons personally. I've fought some personal demons in my own life and, and, and just bad parts of my story from my past and been in challenging seasons in ministry and challenging seasons while leading this church. And one of the things I learned to do a long time ago, and this is gonna set some of you free, I'm telling you, you, so many of you are listening to this message for this very thing today. One of the things I started doing a long time ago is right when I would go to bed at the end of the day, I would pray a prayer. And it's not always the same, but the essence of it is always the same. And so I decided to share it with you today. And I might... No, I'm not going to say I might. I will. I'll actually tweet this out and put it on Facebook as well so, so many of you can take it and use it if you want. But when I feel like the weight is starting to get me down and I feel like I'm starting to, to wear the weight of the problems and the storms in my life, I'm starting to take it all on myself. I'll lay down at night and I'll pray this simple prayer. Almighty God, this is your world. This is your world and these are your people and these are your problems. So because I trust you, oh God, I can leave all of this with you and I can go to sleep. 
And when I wake up in the morning, I trust that you will lead and guide me. But until then, I believe that you still hold the world in the palm of your hands and you are holding me. So I can rest in that reality and trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. What am I doing with that, Marcelo? I'm trusting God with the outcomes of this messy world that we live in. I'm letting God be God, and I'm just going to be a child of God. And I'm going to give it back to Him. I'm going to lay my head down and I'm going to trust that the world will keep spinning and God will keep moving. And if he wakes me up tomorrow, he will lead and guide me through that day. And in this season, as some of you are just fighting this anxiety and you're continuing to run to Philippians 4, remember, be anxious for nothing. And you're starting to lean in and you're starting to understand how to have faith over fear. If you want to just end your days well, steal this prayer from me. Use it. Trust God with the outcomes. And if he wakes you up tomorrow, thank him when he does. Lean on him throughout your day and then pray it again the next night. And you, I believe, will be able to live a life of faith over fear. Let me pray with us. Father, I pray for the men and women and young folks and elderly and anybody who is listening to this, oh God, new hopers and, and even those who are not. One thing we know is that online experience is reaching thousands and thousands of people who do not even go to new hope. Father, thank you for connecting us. Father, I pray for every single person. God, I pray that they would feel your presence in these days. Father God, I pray that they would feel your protection in these days. And Father God, I pray that they would live not with a spirit of timidity, but with power, with love, with self-discipline or a sound mind. And Father, I pray that when they go to bed every night, they let you be you and they curl up as a child of the most high God and they rest in the midst of the storm. Just as we see in Mark 4, your son, the son of God, resting in the stern of the boat, in the middle of the storm, he was able to rest. Father, I want to take a moment and pray for the person who is out there who doesn't know you. God, they've never really surrendered their life to you. And as I've been speaking and we've been singing, God, there's something inside of them tugging at their heartstrings. Father God, the Bible says that you stand at the door of our hearts and you knock. And you tell us that if anyone will open up their heart, you will come in and you will fellowship with them. You will commune with them. And if you're listening today and you desire to do exactly that, you desire to open your heart and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to lead you in a simple prayer. It's not complicated. It's just the prayer of a child to their father. Just pray this, say, Lord Jesus, I receive you. Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. And so I open up my heart. I open up my mind. I open up my life. And I invite you in. And I trust, oh God, that you will come in and you will receive me and we will have a relationship together. I thank you that you died on a cross for me. I thank you that you shed your blood for me. And now I receive you. 
Be with me today, Lord God. Be with me in this season. Help me to live with power, with love, and with self-discipline. Use my life for your glory. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for those who've received Christ now. Thank you for your church who has benefited from your word today. We praise you. We thank you for it. Be with us in the midst of the storm. Quiet the storm. Calm the storm. Bring peace to the storm. Bring peace to us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sing one final song today. And as we do, I want to invite you to participate in our offering right now. Would encourage you to just feel free to go online. There are many ways to give. You can text NH Movement to 77977. You can also download the app. You can also just simply give online. Go to newhopechurch.org forward slash give and you can figure out your tithe there. You can click reoccurring and you can be a part of this movement to sow into this ministry. And if you do, we would be so grateful as God continues to use us to give hope to the world. Hey, as you're doing that, as you're getting your offering ready, these unbelievable musicians are going to lead us in a final song. Won't you join them with all of your heart, all of your soul? I know it might feel a little awkward to sing while you're looking at your phone or sing with your family members in your living room, but let me just encourage you to sing. Let me encourage you to lift your hands if you desire. Let me encourage you to fall on your knees and pray. Whatever the case may be, let's worship God. God, for he is worthy and he is the one who has the power and the authority to calm our storms and let us live with faith over fear. God bless you. When this life is overwhelmed I feel like giving up I will cling to all you promised It will always be enough And when the world around me crumbles And it's hard shelter. I am safe within your hands. Oh, you are my help forever. I will not fear. God, you are with me. I know you're near. You'll never leave me. I will trust. Yeah.
Reminds my heart to trust your faithfulness and love.